Today, we are converting carrots into mead. Let's get started. Okay, so maybe we're not exactly converting carrots into mead. Boo! You stink! Um, in some form or fashion we are. We are using carrot blossom honey. Now, carrot blossom honey is literally honey that bees have pollinated, or bees have pollinated on carrots, essentially, and then, of course, done their regular honey creation thing. Now, this honey, well, I got this honey from, I forgot, from Flying Bee Ranch, which I'll put their website down below. They have a bunch of really cool varietals, but um, I got this honey. It, according to a couple different places, um, like, you know, in a quick Google search, you might find some people say that carrot honey has a dark amber color with a, with an aroma reminiscent of chocolate. I don't totally agree with that. Um, the taste is strong uh, with a bite, a let's see. Some people say grassy aftertaste, earthy, caramely. I don't really agree with that. It has more of like a spicy side. So it has like almost natural, like a little bit of all spice, baking spice cooked into it, so to speak, um, which is interesting. Anyways, got this honey and I decided I wanted to do two things with it. Two things. Uh, I wanted to make a traditional because I like to always have just a base idea of what the honey can do in a traditional. And then I wanted to make a methaglin. So here are my, my two recipes that I am using today. For the traditional, I kept it pretty simple. There's a lot of stuff on here, but it's decently simple. Two and a half pounds of carrot blossom honey, water up to 1.2 gallons because I used a 1.4 gallon fermenter, uh, two grams of Lauvin Borgivin RC212, and one teaspoon of Fermade O. You can get specific and go down to the gram. I just do one teaspoon because I'm kind of lazy, and it's normally enough. Stabilized it, and then we have some post-fermentation process. The methaglin was a little different. I got more things. It includes two and a half pounds of carrot blossom honey, water up to 1.2 gallons, two grams of the yeast, one teaspoon of Fermade O, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, that was ground, um, you could use whatever fresh nutmeg, uh, 1.5 ounces of crushed juniper berries, one crushed star anise, uh, one crushed clove, stabilized it, post-process, those things. So some of you might be asking, why did you choose a yeast that's more suited for reds or berry-based brews? Well, I wanted to get that peppery, spicy, and fruit aroma um, kind of pronounced. I also liked the ABV tolerance. It's quick fermenting, low foaming. It's just a solid yeast that also provides a fair amount of body and tannin, so I thought it'd be good. So I gathered my ingredients, stabilized, or stabilized, sanitized everything. In a way, you're stabilizing. Sanitized all my equipment and then decided to get it going. Um, I mixed up my honey and my water to start into my two containers uh, with that base recipe. I then, for the traditional, it was as simple as, at that point, throwing in the yeast. Um, and I put my Fermade O in, uh, I think, 24 hours later. The methaglin required me to crush up those spices. So I took my little porter, por I cannot speak today, <laughs> mortar and pedestal. Mortar and pestle. Let's make this a drinking game. Every single time I misspeak, feel free to take a drink and we'll see who's more frosty before the end of this video. Um, took my mortal, mortar and pedestal and uh, crushed up the juniper berries and then crushed up all the other things except for the nutmeg, it was already ground. And I put the juniper berries and sort of the other spices into a hop cage, which is like a little collapsible ball thing. And I put that straight into the brew. Threw my yeast in and then included my um, Fermate O 24 hours later. Threw all that stuff in, the fermentation started going, started going pretty cleanly and I was um, fine with that. We started at 1.072 for both of these as starting gravity. Coming out of the primary, which took, I don't know how many days, I'll throw it up on the screen right now. Um, it finished at 1.000. You might notice these are not clear at all, and I will talk about how I've tried to clear them to no avail. 
I did get, after racking them off of each thing, a quick taste test after the primary. So here's that taste test. All right, here they are out of the primary. Right hand methaglin, or excuse me, right hand traditional, left hand is the methaglin. I yielded a little over one gallon, so I did a mixture combination of them. We'll see what happens with that. Here we go. Traditional, We're definitely dry. Got some yeastiness. I'm not gonna have a lot of this. There is a bit of um, continued uh, 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 fruitiness in this. Yeah, it's got like a, what, what is that flavor? It's kind of like pear-y, kind of got a little apple pear to it. That's not bad though. Let's try the methaglin now. Ooh, the body's way, way different. This is way more watery. Interesting. The spices are pretty hot right now. A lot of clove and nutmeg. Star anise is definitely in there. The juniper, it's, it, the spice is heavy, but I think it'll be contrastable. That's a fun word. Woo, we're only 18 days old. They still have promise. We're gonna let them set and hopefully clear up and then go from there. So they're, they're pretty young. I mean, they're needing some time. They're also uh, needing sweetness. And so what I did from that point, I set them back for a little bit to hopefully let things settle down. Um, and I wanted to try and clear them up some before I back sweetened. So I did attempt to cold crash. So I put them, I, after racking of course, put them into a cold chamber for four to five days. Nothing really changed, I'll be honest. Um, and so I pulled those out again. Nothing really even fell to the bottom. I pretty much racked off of most of, most of the stuff. So after cold crashing, I was like, well, I, I guess I'm not gonna try that hard yet because I want to go ahead and oak these. So what I did from there was I took half an ounce of oak for each one and I put them oak straight into the brew, oaked them for about two to three weeks. Um, and I think, because that was helping the tannic value side, felt like it was necessary. Oaked them, pulled them off the oak. I uh, think they were pretty good then. And then I, took a teaspoon, or excuse me, half a teaspoon of powdered wine tannin, put that in there thinking, maybe this will add just a smidge more tannic value and, and help clarity. Still didn't do it. Okay, I give up. So um, after attempting to clear it for all that time, I back sweetened and I back sweetened with uh, some more carrot blossom honey. I gotta look at my thing. Back sweetened with a grand total of, oh, I didn't write it down. Um, four ounces of carrot blossom honey for the traditional, leaving us with a final gravity of 1.010. It was stabilized with before that with potassium sorbate, metabisulfite. Then the methaglin was, uh, I added a grand total of eight ounces of honey because it was a lot more spicy, needed more help. The final gravity for this, of course, after being stabilized was 1.016. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Oh, okay, I know what happened. I thought I was done with this video months ago. You've seen everything up to this point. You've seen the back sweetening, oak additions, final gravities. You even saw the end of the video right there, but that's not the real end. I want to do a tasting of this at nine months. So both of these meads are now nine months old. And uh, I, I just kind of decided, I didn't feel like the finale of that video was great enough. So I wanted to do something more. Um, the only difference, only thing I've done different with these meads now is I actually went and I used some dual fine in these meads to help clear them. So you'll notice that they look a whole lot clearer than in those clips you just saw. And that dual fine is a chitosan and kisasol. So let's go ahead and taste these. Nine months since they've been made with some age on them. Here we go. Oh man, look at these. They're about the same color. Pretty excited about that. They look so stinking good. You know, I do, I've kind of teetered back and forth. Every once in a while, I really go on a, uh, not for a rant, 
I just, I enjoy the clarity side and I think it's true. These look way better, way more approachable at this point than they did in the earlier clips you saw. The haze is something that is not the end of the world, but when I go give this bottle of mead to a friend and they pour this thing, they're gonna go, oh yeah, I think I can trust it. When they pour a hazy bottle, less likely. So on my right hand, got the traditional on this side. My left hand is the methaglin. I'll tell you, when I was pouring the methaglin, it is fragrant. I mean, it is super, super fragrant. Yeah, all of those spices we put in are just popping. And the carrot blossom honey has some uh, spice as is. Also, there's this nice honey sweetness, which is super, super nice. A little bit of vanilla from the oak. I mean, it smells, the, the nose on this thing is fantastic. As far as the traditional, i to reset my nose. Oh yeah, a lot of the same um, earthy spiciness coming from the traditional, which again, just the honey, just the carrot blossom honey. And a little bit of that oak character also smells fantastic. Well, let's start with the traditional since it's the, the base value of this honey. Oh yeah, there's that. A little bit of a the dark earthy spice note that almost leans a little bit into like a, a, a not quite licorice. It might have a little bit of a licorice note to me. It is, uh, the sweetness level is nice because it still pronounces honey character, but it's not cloying. We're not very sweet on this thing as is, but it just ups the value a little bit. Pretty thick bodied. Oh yeah, mouthfeel. It's juicy, but it has some nice tannin. The nice thing about this, it's a traditional mead with complexity and it's got the honey as the most important character, obviously important and traditional. And we have a lot of um, development as you go down. If you taste your mead and you notice that it, it washes away really fast, unless that's intentional, it's probably not very uh, nice. You want your mead to kind of have a little complexity within it. Um, so this has some complexity as it rides down the palate. I mean, I'd say that's a pretty good representation of this honey in a traditional state at nine months. I don't have a lot of ABV. I don't feel it at all. Um, nine and a half percent where we're sitting for this guy. So it's pretty smooth. I think it's good. Great representation of carrot blossom honey. So let's switch to the other side. Here's our methaglin. This of course has all of the spices we threw in there. Yeah, it's so much more fragrant than the traditional, I'll say. Oh yeah, Ooh, the spices are really nice together. They're kind of melding and they're making it feel more round and um, has more tannin. I, obviously spices will contribute tannin, stuff like cinnamon, juniper berries, anything like that is gonna provide a little tannin to this. So it's got a little more viscous tannin than the traditional, which was just oaked. It is very spice forward, but the honey character is still shining. And I know that because I've had carrot blossom honey as a traditional, I can still get the same characters in this. And that's super good. Again, no ABV burn. Um, it's just smooth. Looks good. Nose is nice. I was a little hesitant when I first created this recipe because I was looking at my ratios of spices and going, this is so much spice. And I bet these juniper berries and all of these things are just going to like kick me in the face and I won't be able to enjoy this mead. I do believe at the uh, three month aging point or three month time period that I had done my original tasting, this was probably not as smooth, um, way more punchy with that, the spice characters, but now it's got this really nice ar aroma and uh, honey contribution, it's just smooth, it's pretty good. Age has helped. Both of these recipes are fun. This carrot blossom honey is super intriguing. If you're able to get a hold of some, feel free to go ahead and check out the link down below. I think they might have some still, but I encourage you to get some if you can. This is a, a fun type of honey. Of course, use what you have around you, support your local apiaries, but when you decide and you want to get a little more adventurous and get outside of your realm of, let's say you only have clover honey, it's great to go to these websites and support them. So if you wanna find the recipes, they're down below. 
If you want to support the channel, go ahead and hit like. I do have a challenge for us. I don't know that we're gonna get there on this video. We'll see if you can help me out with this. I would love to see if we can get this video up to 500 likes. And I feel like that's an ambitious goal. <laughs> but maybe we can get there. Uh, it's simple enough, hit that. When you do that, you are supporting the channel in the easiest way possible, the freest way possible, because that will say, hey, this video is doing well, and it will help push the video out, which then brings attention to the channel. So if you wanna support me in that way, feel free to do that. Let's try to hit 500 likes. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but a good goal. So thank you for watching. If you would like to learn how to make this or already forgotten, go back to the beginning of the video and uh, hope to see you in the future. Cheers.